We know that in certain geometries, coordination complexes exhibit geometrical isomerism. And the way the ligands are arranged in space can have a significant say in their chemical and physical properties. And we saw that by using the example of cisplatin versus transplatin. In one specific arrangement of ligands in the cis form, what we had was an entirely different biological activity. Cisplatin acted as an anti-cancer drug, an efficient anti-cancer drug. But the same compounds when arranged differently in the trans form, where the ligands are opposite to each other, did not show any promising biological activity. So clearly we can see how the arrangement of ligands around a central metal ion can have a significant impact on its behavior. Now when it comes to coordination compounds, geometrical isomerism is most relevant in compounds with coordination number 4 and coordination number 6. And what are the geometries associated with these coordination numbers? In coordination number 4, complexes can exist in square planar or tetrahedral geometries. And in coordination number 6, complexes exist in octahedral geometry. But you don't see geometrical isomerism in all of these arrangements. In fact, only square planar and octahedral complexes exhibit geometrical isomerism and not tetrahedral. And why do you think that is? What is actually stopping a tetrahedral complex from exhibiting geometrical isomerism? Take a moment, pause the video and see if you can figure out answer to this question, okay? Well, here's the thing. Geometrical isomerism occurs when the same set of atoms or ligands is connected in the same order, but as we have mentioned many times by now, they are arranged differently in space. And this is due to the rigidity of coordination environment. What do we mean by rigidity? It means that for geometrical isomerism to occur, there must be restricted rotation and ligands should occupy non-equivalent positions. What do we mean by non-equivalent position? It simply means that each position around a central metal ion is unique and the different arrangements, the cis and trans are fixed. You cannot obtain them or you cannot convert one form to another by simply rotating the compound or by overlapping it. These positions are fixed with respect to each other and that is what allows for cis and trans unique isomers. And this is exactly what you see in square planar and octahedral complexes. The cis and trans isomers are unique and the position of the ligands around the central metal ion are not equivalent. But what about tetrahedral complexes? Why is it that we do not get geometrical isomers in tetrahedral complexes? Alright, for that, let's zoom into the structure. You can see that for a tetrahedral complex like MA2B2, the ligands A and B occupy the four corners of a tetrahedron. And all of us know that tetrahedral geometry is highly symmetrical. Now, even though we have two different ligands A and B here, all of them are equally spaced from each other at a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. We can see that the relative positions of these ligands that are attached to the central metal ion are the same with respect to each other. All the positions, the positions of the ligands are all equivalent from one another and that means no matter how you rotate or reposition these ligands, we will end up getting the same structure. And as a result, we cannot create distinct arrangements like cis and trans isomers in a tetrahedral geometry. Now you see, Square planar and octahedral geometries are also symmetrical geometries. Yes, they are symmetrical. But the thing is that they do allow for different arrangements of ligands such that we actually get distinct unique isomers like cis and trans, which is not possible in a tetrahedral complex. So it's not really about the symmetry here. Of course, all of them do have symmetrical geometry. But the thing is, do we get unique positions of ligands? Are our arrangements distinct from one another? And in that respect, our tetrahedral geometry fails. Alright, so now that the tetrahedral complexes are out of the picture, let's put all our energy in square planar complexes. So let's get back to the actual agenda of our video, which is to understand the geometrical isomerism in different square planar complexes. Now we already saw that in complexes of the type MA2B2, we get two geometrical isomers, right? One cis and one trans. Similarly, in the complexes of the type MA2BC, where we have replaced one B ligand with a different ligand C, here again we get two geometrical isomers, one cis and one trans as you can see here. 
the cis and the trans isomer depends on the positioning of a ligand A. If the ligands A are adjacent to each other, we get a cis isomer. And if the ligands A are positioned opposite to each other, we get the trans isomer. Now remember folks, M A to B2 or M A to B C are the general forms of writing uh, the different types of square planar complexes. Okay, here we have not taken into account the charge of the complex. The complex may have a positive, negative or neutral charge and that would depend on the metal's oxidation state as well as the charge of the ligand. Do we have an anionic ligand? Do we have a cationic ligand? And what is the charge of the ligand here? So that is something that you have to take care when you're talking about specific compounds. And to be more specific, now you can even mention the complex with N plus or minus as a charge. But this is also acceptable when we talk about the general form of a particular type of a complex. Okay? But what about complexes of the type M, A, B, C, D where the metal ion is bonded to four different ligands? Do you think this complex would exhibit any geometrical isomerism? And if it does, how many geometrical isomers do we get here? Pause the video, take some time and come up with an answer, okay? Alright, so let's see how to answer this question. For that, let's fix one ligand at one particular position. Let's have A here. And then arrange the other three ligands with respect to A. Okay. So let's place B here, C here and D here. Now in the next arrangement again, let's keep the position of A fixed and move these ligands around. Okay. And when we do that, we will notice that by only switching the ligands in the adjacent or opposite position, we are able to get a new geometrical isomer. So I got these three unique isomers here. Now, any other arrangement obtained by simply rotating the complex will not give us a new arrangement. It will actually fall back to one of these arrangements. I can understand if you are being skeptical about it. So, let's try one more example together. Okay. In the next set, let's keep B fixed. Alright. And keep changing the others. So, we have A here, A here and A here. Let's say C is here. C is here and C is here and D is here, D is here and D can be placed here. Now can you see that all of these arrangements that we got by keeping B fixed and by changing the other ligands would be exactly same as one of these arrangements. For example, here you have A, B, D, C. Can you see something that here? A, B, D, C. So this arrangement is same as this arrangement, right? You can get one of this by simply rotating the complex, which means this is not a unique geometrical isomer. What about this one? You have B, D, A, C. Do we have something like that here? Yes, B, D, A, C. This is exactly same as this one. So these two are exactly the same. So this again is not an isomer. And what about this? B, C, D, A. So B, C, D, A. This is same as this one, which means this is again not a new unique position. So none of this is actually a new isomer. You can try the same thing by keeping C ligand or D ligand fixed in one position and by moving the other ligands around. You will still see that you do not get any new unique arrangements other than these three. So that means square planar complexes of the type M, A, B, C, D with four different ligands will have three geometrical isomers. Two cis and one trans isomer. So these are the two cis isomers and this is the trans isomer here. Alright, so before wrapping up the video, let's look at one more type of square planar complex, okay? So the complex here is MA3B. Now tell me, does this square planar complex exhibit geometrical isomerism? The answer is no. You see, when you rearrange ligands in this square planar complex, you get the following different arrangements. And we can get these structures by simply rotating the complex. That means there is no scope for a cis or a trans isomer in this type of complex. So to summarize, we saw geometrical isomerism in different square planar complexes. In complexes of the type MA to B2 and MA to BC, we get two geometrical isomers, one cis and one trans. In M, A, B, C, D, where the metal is bonded to four different monodentate ligands, we get three geometrical isomers, two cis and one trans. 
And finally, the complexes of the type MA3B do not exhibit any geometrical isomorphism. Alright folks, that's it for today. In the next video, we are going to talk about geometrical isomerism in octahedral complexes.